conversation with a woman that I have been working with for several years who has really taken all of what I teach inside of Living Sexology and really made it her own. Really, really inspiring woman. She inspires me constantly. And um, so that's Amanda. She's with us today. And, um, and we're also going to do a, a, mind, a mindset shift practice at the end of our time together today. So um, I'm really just looking forward to seeing what unfolds and if any questions come up for you as we're, you know, journeying through our, our time together this morning, just go ahead and write them in the chat box and we will answer them as they come up. So, um, so yeah, I think without further ado, go ahead, Amanda, and unmute yourself again. And we're just going to have just a, a nice, sweet little conversation with Amanda. So she's been... Um, working with me and she's gone through living sexology for several years in a row and um, and has really transformed her relationship with her body, her sexuality and connection to spirit on on so many levels. So Amanda, is there anything I have some questions for you, but is there anything that you kind of want to want to say like right off the bat to just introduce yourself? I mean, you all, you know, I always have things to say, um, but yeah, why don't you just go ahead and ask your questions and we'll go from there. Okay, so I would, I guess I would want to start with like what, before you um, came to living psychology, what was your relationship with your sexuality like? Um, I thought that, so I, I used to deal with a lot of pain around sex. Um, and specifically with orgasm. And I thought that my body was broken and I thought my sexuality was broken mm. and I thought that Willow could fix me. <laughs> and so um, so that's really kind of what I was looking for was I, you know, I was looking for, I was looking to be fixed and I thought that somebody outside of me could do that. And I had, like I'd been doing a lot of the right things, you know, I'd been, I had a naturopath, I had an acupuncturist, um, and both of those people were really knowledgeable, but, um, like I would, I would ask them, you know, really specific questions about things that were going on with me and my body and my cycles and different things. And, and they wouldn't have answers. And I was always, I was always just kind of confused because, I was like, you know, something must really be wrong with me if these people who have all of this knowledge and who have been practicing, you know, their respective fields for all of these years, if they can't answer my questions and if they can't help me, like what's wrong with me, right? And so um, Willow did a, like, I think you did like a free 15 or 30 minute consultation or something. And um, I was just telling you about some of my, you know, some of what was going on with me. And, um, and I asked, and I don't remember exactly what specific questions I asked, but one of, but what the essence of what I said is like, do you, do you think you actually know what's going on with me? Do you think you can help me? And she's like, oh yeah. And she just like answered, you just like answered with confidence that like, yeah, you, you knew. And um, your, your, your responses gave me confidence that okay, I think that this person might actually be different. Like she might actually know, you know, like I thought these other people, the naturopath and the acupuncturist, like I thought they should know um, and they didn't. And um, so I was like, okay, I think, I think Willow knows. And as I've gone through the program and, uh, you know, as I've been a part of Willow's stuff, it's been like, it's been over three years now, I think. And like you really do, Willow, you understand the female body and endocrine system and all of that stuff like that I was, that I thought I was looking for and I was looking for, um, like you get that. And that was so refreshing. Um, but then you also like get the other stuff, right? Because it's not all just physical. And I kind of had a sense that it wasn't all just physical. I kind of knew that. Um, and you were really able to speak to that part of it too. Like I have, 
um, a history of childhood sexual abu abuse. I come from a religious background. So there's all of these messages from, you know, my family background and my religious background about sex and about my body. And so I feel like, like having you Willow in my life and your program and the other ladies and all the teachings and the tools, um, like, all of that, I feel like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm getting too big here, but um, I just feel like over the years, I've been able to use all of that to like unearth all of these layers, right? And I came to a point, like, I think it was nine months to a year after I started, like you have this nine month program. So it was like at the end of that nine month program, I realized that I wasn't, I was never broken and like, I never really needed to be fixed. I just had all of this crap that like all of these layers that needed to be dealt with. And some of them, and like one of the layers was like family messages. So I'm able to through like through one of the things that really helped that was the, like the one-on-one -on -one sessions with Willow. And we do these like guided meditations and those were really powerful for me just like identifying some of those family messages. So like that was a layer. And then there was also a layer of like physical stuff, right? So like your knowledge of the herbs and the actual body stuff was super helpful because I was able to deal with the actual physical stuff that was going on with me and realize that that's not brokenness. That's just my body crying out for the right attention. And when you get, when I, when I gave it that attention, um, then that layer, that layer also went away. And so like that moment when I realized that, um, that I'm not really broken, like that was so powerful. And so um, it just like shifted everything for yeah. me. That was a really big moment. I remember you sent me an email and I was like, oh my God, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> He's done here, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you were never broken and you didn't need anyone to fix you, but just to take off those layers. I spoke about that kind of yesterday. Those, those, I think of them as like these damp blankets that kind of bog down your system. And so, you know, they, and they take understanding, right. To, to really remove them. You have to understand and, and, and be able to kind of make friends with them in a way in order for them to go away. Yeah, that was another really big thing for me um, that you helped me with, Willow, was I dealt with a lot of physical pain. And I always just used to, like my strategy for dealing was, with the pain was to either ignore it or, um, or I would just like be mad about it. <laughs> like that, I had one of two responses, to be angry or to ignore it. And um, it was in one of our like guided meditation sessions when we um you were like I don't know I was able to visualize the pain which sounds really weird but once I was able to visual visualize the pain um I was I was almost able to like develop a relationship with the pain which again I know sounds kind of weird but once I stopped being mad at it and once I stopped ignoring it and I almost embraced it and I would like, I, I still, to this day, if I have pain, I have a conversation with it. Like, Hey pain, you know, what are you here for? Um, what can I do for you? Like, I don't really want you here, but you know, what can I, like, what can I do? Like, what do I need to learn? What I need to do differently. And that really has made all the difference. Um, as far as pain and dealing with pain. Um, yeah. 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 Amanda is really taking sort of my, my approach to coaching and she can just sit in the bathtub and do it herself now. <laughs> you know, she, yeah, I can. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah I love it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sort of curating Amanda to do some coaching for, for me <laughs> as this program grows. So um, it's yeah. really exciting because, um, you know, as I've said so many times, like what I, my goal with this information and this wisdom in this course is to 
um, give you everything that you, that's going to work for you that you need. And, and so that you can make it your own. This is a medicine, you know, it's a way of being in the world. And I want this medicine to be your own medicine so that you don't, you know, you're not dependent on me. I don't want you coming to me for the rest of your life. I mean, I'll always be here for you, but you know, at some point I won't be here. And so I want whoever is learning this medicine and the legacy of it to live on inside of each one of you so you can pass it down to you know the the young the younger generation as well and and share it with the people in your life so um you know it's been it's been an absolute honor and pleasure to work with amanda these last three years and to really watch her step into her sovereignty her sexual sovereignty in a whole new way um the some of the physical pain do you mind amanda if i share um about the physical pain that you yeah so she had endometriosis and she was having um, painful orgasms because of that. So, so because of the scar tissue inside and around her, um, her reproductive organs and her genitals, because when you have an orgasm, your, your uterus contracts, you know, your, um, your whole insides do this little spasm and it, it should feel pleasurable and good. But when there's a lot of scar tissue um, wrapped up in there, plus all the emotional trauma and pain, family stories religious upbringing guilt shame all of that that's like wrapped up in there um you know when you have that that spasm it can it can cause pain it's a very unusual form of pain during sex but it definitely is um a, a big one that a, a lot of practitioners don't have an answer for and so and I don't have an answer for it either Amanda had the answer for it you know and so we extracted what that answer was out of her so that she could um, get to a place where she was having pleasurable orgasms and um, recently Amanda you were like I think I'm never going to have another painful orgasm again and you were just so in that confidence and that conviction it was just so beautiful to witness and then I think you may have sent me another email after that saying like oh maybe I did have a, a little bit of one again you know but but the thing that you know now is you know how to not you know how to slow down enough and really listen to your body enough and and ask your partner tell your partner what you need like you know what you need so well that it's easy for you to tell your partner like okay i need to slow down i need to you know take a break i need to take a pause in order to really be in the pleasure of this and not just bulldoze through and have it be a painful experience which is very true for um many women who are experiencing painful sex whether it's due to dryness whether it's due to endometriosis whether it's due to just not being um you know warmed up enough i mean what happens to the to the vagina and the vulva when you get turned on and we get um sexually aroused and excited is all these tissues expand and open up it really is like a flower that blooms and opens and it's not until those vestibular bulbs inside of your yoni which we're going to do a workshop on that pretty soon me and leah piper so stay tuned for that but you know it's when those bulbs open up and they're like this okay, now I'm ready to receive something into me, whether it's a finger or a penis or a jade egg or a vibrator, it doesn't matter, but you know, they need to have that sort of like, okay, now I'm ready. You can't, you don't want to just, there's a closing of the vulva and there's an opening of the vulva. And so, um, you know, Amanda's explored that on her own plenty and she knows it so well with herself that she can communicate it really easily at this point with a partner and also my partner he doesn't even actually need me to communicate so much anymore he knows before like if I say I need a break he's like yeah I know like he doesn't always say yeah I know but he just knows he just knows yeah he's you've taught him right you've curated him to understand mm -hmm. your body and that's that's like that's an ultimate that intimate connection right there that's a deep spiritual intimate connection like he already is knows how to read your body because you've taught him how to read your body because you know how to read your body so it's all coming from inside of you yeah right. really beautiful that, now, that's, a, that's another thing too that's actually been really powerful like I never thought that I could ask for what I wanted during sex and 
like not only do I know how to ask for it, but I am like I'm listened to and respected in that space. Um, and like this this guy, like there's been you know a lot of there's been some issues you know with our relationship, but um, like that part of it has been so beautiful. The mm-hmm. fact that he like it's been so empowering to be listened to and respected in that space. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's Amanda, he's a really like, because he is able to listen and be present and respect you in that space, like despite the other sort of logistical things that are, that go on between the two of you. um, I, I think like you attracted somebody who can be present, who can listen and who can honor you because you began to have that inner confidence inside of you you know you began to have that sense of self-worth so deeply embedded in your cellular cellular body that you are worthy of having that kind of intimate connection with somebody and Hmm. uh, and then there he he appeared yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) so you really magnetized that into your life it was really really beautiful to witness. I got to watch the whole thing. <laughs> it's always fun for me when I get to see, um, you know, the, the partner that is, and, and ultimately every single partner that you are with, every single man or woman or whatever intimate connection that you have is just a stepping stone to a higher level of yourself. It's not about them. It's about you. It's about who you're calling in, who you're um, mirroring in your life, you know, because you have stepped up to a higher level inside of yourself. Um, I mean, I have to say, I'm going to bring it back to myself for a second here, but um, the the recent uh, Tantra date that I had right before the accident, that was that was by far that the biggest step that I've ever uh, stood on, you know, in my in my intimate um, attraction and magnetism. So I, I know regardless of what happens between us, you know, I don't, I don't think we're life partners or anything, but regardless of that, it's like, okay. I have just stepped up to a new level inside of myself and my life. And now what am I going to do with that? What am I going to create with that? What do I need to let go of in order to maintain that, you know, using that ancient wisdom approach to really um, integrate that into, into my life. And that's really what, what this whole practice is about. So um, Amanda, is there anything else that you want to mention? Let me see if I have any other questions for you. It was just great what you shared already. Um, You know, maybe one more question I would want to ask you, Amanda, is like at this point, so so we just went over the um, the protective patterns that relate to each of the chakras and the glands in our in our living sexology group. And um, I'm not sure how tuned into those you were, Amanda, you caught some of them for sure. But I'm just wondering, like, At this point, when you get into a triggered state or when you, you know, when you go into pattern, are you, are you aware of it? And what sort of physical things show up to let you know that you are, are in that state? Yeah, um, I am able to identify it, I think. Um, What kind of physical things? I don't know. I just kind of, no, I guess for me, like one of my biggest pattern things is avoiding or isolating. Mm -hmm. So like when I stop opening the mail or checking email or listening to voicemails or whatever, that's like my biggest, um, my biggest red flag Mm -hmm. is like, okay, something's, something's going on. Like, even if I don't know something's going on, something's going on. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's how I know. Um, and I also do have, um, like if I start feeling pain, especially kind of abdominal pain, um, that's kind of, that's a place that I hold stress. So that's another, another way if I'm, if I'm paying attention that I know. 
Uh huh. So good. So you've got your indicators. You're like, okay, I'm starting to recluse. I haven't opened my messages in a few days. Yeah. And then also, yeah, the abdominal pain. I can certainly relate to that as well. My my gut has been a big indicator for me throughout my life, and um, learning how to listen to it and pause long enough to. You know, there's um, there's these seven principles that I teach inside of the course that will really help you change these patterns and start to pay attention to these indicators, and um, and pause is one of them. And so taking that pause long enough to be like, okay, and to just be aware of that you that you have gone into a trigger mode or a regression of some sort, and. And then, um, you know, then you, you, you know how to get yourself out of it. So, so that's sort of my next leading question for you, Amanda, is like, so what do you do in those moments, you know, when you're like, oh, I am starting to go into my, my old pattern? Um, I think one of the, I mean, there's a couple of things. Um, one of my main things is doing the, either the yoga or the Qigong, mm -hmm. um, both of those I just feel like any sort of um, any sort of movement, like meditative movement, um, it kind of gets it out of me, you know. And and if it doesn't, then I think my next go-to is the um, ovarian breathing. That there's something about that that just kind of clears it all out. Um, the breast rotations that you taught us with the deer breathing. I actually kind of have a hard time with that one still, but um, that one's helpful. And if I, depending on like the mood I'm in and how much time I have, self cultivating um, can be helpful, but sometimes I just don't want to deal with that, you know? <laughs> um, like, yeah. Yeah, today. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And when she says self-cultivating, she's she's saying um self-pleasuring. So masturbating. Masturbating is old paradigm word. We don't use that in living sexology. We say self-cultivating. So really drawing sexual energy through your body and cultivating that sexual energy inside of yourself. Um, you know, there are specific qigong practices. So if you're in a funk and you're in a mood and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm irritated, like, God, every little thing is so annoying today, then you would know certain qigong to go to. If you're in a state of like, oh, I'm depressed, I've got the blues, like I can't get out of this funk, then you would have another different qigong or yoga practice to go to. So the, the practices are based on the, the four phases of the moon cycle, the ancient wisdom approach. And, um, you know, how those, uh, the Chinese medicine system, the Taoist system inside of your body, how to bring it back into balance. So you know, as Amanda was saying, like just moving and breathing and getting that, that movement to release the emotional trigger or um, pattern is, uh, is often all you need. I mean, I do it every day. I go out to the cliffs in Santa Cruz and do my Qigong practice every day. I was doing it very heavily yesterday because I could feel a lot of, just a lot of different emotions that I was processing on that new moon yesterday. And so I did the whole Taoist five, you know, I did all five of the, of the Qigong practices that fit into those four phases of the moon cycle. And I mean, by the end of that, I was, I was right as rain. I was good to go. I was like back in my, you know, in my light space. And so so it's not that emotions aren't going to come up and you're going to be the happiest camper on the planet after you go through this course. It's not that you're not going to get triggered and that you're not going to go through heartbreak and that you're not going to have all these things that we as humans get to experience in life. But it's just that you will have um, a resource and a place to go, um, a place to, to shift, shift in order to come back to your center and back to your truest, deepest yeah. essence. Yeah, and I wanna say too, that like, I don't always react perfectly, you know? Um, like I, like on Friday, I was like super down. <laughs> and, you know, I know that I have all my practices that I could do, but I just like drank beer, <laughs> um, right? And so I still like have a tendency sometimes to go back into like, the unhealthy ways of dealing with things are just escaping. But I think one of the, um, I think the thing, 
like the biggest change in that area is I do that less than I used to like I I don't like that's not a common reaction anymore is to just escape like more often than not I do the healthy thing you know the qigong or the whatever Mm -hmm. and and the same thing like I still you know might get depressed or whatever but I come out of it faster and um, I don't go there as often and so would you say Amanda that that allows you to trust yourself more oh yeah yeah for sure yeah And that's what we talked about on the first day of this workshop series is you've got to be able to trust yourself to take whatever comes and turn it into something valuable, you know, and sometimes you just want to have that escape and eat that sugar and drink that beer and watch that TV. And that's okay too, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's interesting too, certain times of your cycle, you're going to have more energy to go to the healthy thing and do the practices. Other times of your cycle, you're going to be like, give me the sugar, (laughs) give me the beer, you know, give me the escape and, um, and, and the awareness of it is uh is more precious and valuable than anything else than the actual doing of it so you know amanda she just had a day she had a day she went into it she did her thing and she knew she wasn't gonna stay there and she knew it wasn't gonna take her down she just needed and i also and i also don't have to beat myself up up over that anymore like i used to be like i actually on friday i drank beer and i ate ice cream and you know and liz are like you know, whatever. And I think previously I would have been like, like, I, I would kind of beat myself up and like, well, like, what, what are you thinking, Amanda? Why are you doing that? Why are you drinking beer and eating ice cream? Like, what's wrong with you? You know, you're not supposed to do that. You know, it's not good for your body. Like all of these messages. Right. And I was just able to be like, you know what, whatever it is, what it is. It was a night and that was the night. And now I'm going to move on with my life. Right. <laughs> That's right. I love it. So yes, you don't get so attached. You don't go so down the like negative spiral loop. You just like, you have your moment. And also, you know, beer and ice cream are pleasurable, enjoyable things to experience sometimes. And so that that's the balance too. You know, as I mentioned in my, it's not there, there's chocolate in there. There's alcohol in there. It's not like, it's not this kind of diet or that kind of diet or any kind of thing. It's what works for you and figuring out what works for you. And so, you know, basking in the pleasure, like, I'll tell you what I had, my girlfriend made this, um, like really healthy cassava, something agave cake. Talia made that and um and she gave me it last night and I hadn't really had dinner and so I was like okay it's 10 o'clock at night I'm gonna have cake for dinner you know nice. and it was just like and I just enjoyed the crap out of it and of course I'm not gonna do that every night you know but it's like that's the balance that's what we want to create in our lives especially around those things that are pleasurable to take pleasure in them and to not have guilt around them because mm-hmm. the, it's the guilt that causes the dis-ease in your body not the thing itself so if there's a balance where you're more going toward that healthy um shift you know but occasionally you drop into that like you know I just need this right now um that's really what it's about so yeah thank you so much Amanda anything else you want to add before we shift into a little mindset practice I don't think so I just want to say, like, I don't think anybody will ever regret being a part of Willow's programs. So if you're on the fence, just do it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there really is. It's for you. It's it's really for you to to have a a different foundation in your life that that will last forever. You know, it will last you years and years to come. Um, all right. So, so I want to do a practice with you all. And the way that I, uh, think mindset shifts last the longest and become the most infused inside of your system is when you feel them is when you have a visceral somatic experience of them. So saying mindset shift is a little bit, um, is a little misleading because it's really a body set shift that we're doing. So I want to, let's just drop into a little bit of some more meditative and sacred space together. And this will be kind of a guided meditation. So as much as you can, just kind of drop in and and listen and, and let my voice lead you. So start by bringing your awareness to your exhale. 
Allow your exhale to be twice as long as your inhale. As you breathe in, allow a beautiful crystal clear white light to fill the lungs. Again, let your exhale be long, slow, and deep. Navel toward the spine, clearing all the still air from the very bottom of your lungs. And as you inhale, allow the inspiration to flow in effortlessly and easily. So the breath itself has the ancient wisdom approach in it. We clear on the exhale. We get all the way down to the very bottom of the breath, clearing, 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 releasing, 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 all that stagnant still air from the bottom. And when there's no more space to clear, then you inspire, you expand, and you open to create what it is that you're cultivating in your life. Just allow the space between your eyebrows to soften and spread and feel any energy that's in the frontal lobe of your brain drop back toward your hindbrain and down toward the base of your skull where the cerebellum is. And as your consciousness rests near the base of your skull, just notice that you have a greater capacity to hear sounds that are far away from you. and noticing sounds that are close to you. Noticing the sound of your own breath. So it's in this place of, of more diffuse awareness that your sensation, sense of sound, smell, taste, touch can be more easily witnessed and each one of those sensations is a doorway into the present moment. And one of the things I teach inside the course is how to cultivate all the senses inside of you, the ones that are strong and easily utilized, the ones that are weak and don't get as much attention, and really bringing them all up to a new level so that you can access presence through your sensuality very easily. And so right now in this moment, I want you to, from this place of more presence, more embodied, I want you to just notice where in your body is there a, a belief or a feeling of, I, I don't think that I'm going to be capable of attracting my beloved into my life and having the level of spiritual intimacy that we've been talking about all week. I don't really believe it's possible for me. I doubt it. I'm not sure. Where do you feel that in your body? And then wherever you feel it, hone in on that area and notice what the sensation of it actually is. Like, is it, is it tight? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it achy? What's the sensation? And then just kind of wrap up that sensation and that place in your body in a big hug. Just be like, okay, I see you. I, I'm observing you. I'm noticing you. Give it a big hug and just kind of sit next to it like it's a, like it's a little part of yourself and just say, put your arm around it and say, it's okay. It's okay that you're here. I'm going to give you some attention now. And then go ahead and, and just let that, that sort of adult part of yourself sit down next to that, that little part of yourself that's, um, that's in doubt or fear or uncertainty. And just let them sit there for a moment. And then go through your body once again, just kind of scanning from head to toe and noticing where in your body 
do you believe that you are worthy, that you are valuable, that you can have that deep spiritual intimacy, that deep connection with your beloved? Where do you feel that in your body? And once you've identified where you feel that in your body, notice what the sensation of that is. And noticing if that sensation feels lighter, uh, more sort of open or expansive, whatever that sort of the, the words to describe that sensation, just let them kind of come into form in that place in your body. And if you're not driving, if you've got your hands free, you can put um, your, we're gonna put your left hand over the place in your body that feels like, oh yeah, I definitely am worthy of having that deep spiritual intimacy and connection. And you're gonna put your right hand over that place in your body that's like, mm, I don't know if I can really manifest that in this lifetime, I'm not so sure. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna merge these two. So as you, your left hand is your receptive hand. So imagine that you are receiving this, this energy and it might, be, it might be a light, it might be a certain color, it might be um, kind of like a, a more of a fluid. So notice what the energy is for you and just let it travel from your place in your body that's like, oh yeah, I'm worthy of that. I can have that. I have no doubt. Let it travel from that place in your body into your left hand. Center of your palm is a big heart chakra center. as a heart point there. So let it travel into your left palm and feel it fill up inside of your whole left hand through your fingers and then let it travel through your left wrist all the way through your left arm into your left elbow notice if you can feel some sensation of what that feels like often it feels like a filling or sometimes a tingling just noticing it and you may not feel any sensation that's okay just visualize it and and stay with it moving through your left elbow up through your left upper arm. It's gonna travel into your left shoulder and across the back of your shoulder blades. So from your left shoulder, it goes through the back of your left shoulder blade, past the back door of your heart, which is where grace enters your body, all the way over to the right shoulder blade, right shoulder, down the right arm, right elbow, right forearm, into your right hand, your right hand now filling up with this energy of, yes, I am worthy, I am capable, I can create this for myself in my life, into your right hand, filling up with that. And then from your right palm, that heart chakra point at the center, right into that place in your body that's like, mm, I have doubt. I have uncertainty, I have fear. And let it go right into that place in your body. And just bring forth that new sense of sensation, that quality, that light. And where you have been sitting right next to this doubt and this shame, just allow that doubt and that fear, that uncertainty to soak in and to bask in this energy that's coming from your left hand and just feel it continue to come into the left hand, up the left arm, across the shoulder blades, down the right arm, into the right hand, into this place in your body until you feel a shift in the sensation under your right hand. And you should feel like a softening, a release under that right hand. You might even get some, you know, gurgles in your belly or some, you know, your breath might deepen. Those are visceral responses to um, energetic releases, also emotional releases. 
And so once you feel that shift, then, then you're really complete. So just thank those two different pieces, those two different parts of yourself. Thank, thank them both for, for showing up for you in this moment and for being willing to offer the medicine that they have, offer the wisdom that they have for you. And just start to feel the tissues between the right hand and the left hand meld together and blend together until they become one sort of congruent plane of connective tissue in your body. And then I always like to seal up this practice taking the thumbs, the thumbs represent ether. So just running the thumbs over your um, midline, your front midline of your body, just to seal it up and be like, okay, body, we did a good job. Body set shift, mindset shift, and, and then let it go. So, um, so I'll take shares if anybody wants to share how that was for them, or if anyone wants to ask any questions about anything. And if nobody wants to share, that's cool too. I can really feel um, that inside of my body. I got a pretty quick response. So um, you know, I've been doing this practice for 20 years, so uh, it gets it gets easier and easier to feel the shift the more that you um, integrate the practice into your life. But um, it is it is a powerful way to to change your mind by changing your body. So you know, we are two sides of the same coin. We've got our physical mm -hmm. side, and then we've got our spiritual emotional side. And uh, in the Western world, you know, in our culture, we are always looking to change the mind in order to change the body. But what I've found is it's actually a lot easier to do it the other way around. And that's sort of the Eastern approach. That's the, the Ayurvedic and the Taoist. And, you know, that's the approach is like, let's get into the visceral and, and the different brains in your body. You know, we've got this brain in our head, but we've also got neuropathways and memories and things in our hearts and in our guts and in our vajayjays. So, um, you know, really listening to all those different brains in your body and creating a different, um, a different belief system is going to change the outer world around you. So Jet, did you want to share? Yeah, I'll share. I mean, it, it was marvelous. And, um, you know, interesting that when, when I asked that question, like what area to go to, to, to offer, to, to give help is my JJ. And I mean, I've just not really heard her. And I really appreciate um, Amanda's, story because I can relate to some of that confusion and uh, trauma around it. So uh, yeah, the meditation mindset change was awesome. And then at one point, like I could, when I looked at the screen and saw Erica Cassidy sitting there with her little child and we were talking about setting the little unhappy lump beside us or whatever, you know, really was a beautiful mother child image. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. That's awesome. Beautiful. Thank you, Jet. Anyone else want to share your experience or any questions about anything? All right. Beautiful. Well, we are close to our time. So what we'll do is we'll wrap it up. Um, I'm going to put in the chat box right now, a link to book a private session with me so that we can discuss more personally how um, how living sexology will work for you, how you can use it to um, really transform yourself and your life. And I, I want to say, you know, yesterday and today, the women, you know, you women, you who are coming to this call and coming to this course, already have a, a, a you're already at a certain level you know and so when you're already at that certain level of spirituality and practice and health awareness and all of that 
Then when you step into living sexology and you go through um, learning the Taoist approach to all of this, learning how the meridian systems play into it, how your organ systems, how your hormonal system, how it all plays into it all together, that's how, <laughs> that's when you really expand into this highest, highest, highest potential of yourself. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm here to do is to really support you in reaching that highest potential of yourself, because I, that's how I see you. I already see you in that place. And I know that you have it inside of yourself to get there. And I know how to massage you and help you get into that place. And so, um, you know, it is such a, such an honor to, to really, to magnetize you all who are already at this certain level. Um, you know, I have in the past, I was magnetizing people who are kind of really had no consciousness, really had no idea, really had never even heard of ashwagandha or whatever, you know, just really didn't even know that drinking water was important. Well, you know, I was attracting people who were eating, uh, you know, McDonald's and drinking soda all day. And so it's much, much harder for me to work with those people. Um, it's, it's, it's not as exciting. It's not as advanced. And so, um, you know, I love to bring women through this course who already have a certain level of consciousness and awareness around this stuff because then we can really fly you know then we can really go to the highest of heights um, so go ahead and click that link and you know I have time today so if you want to talk today about um, payment plans or you know how this is going to work for you or if you're having any fear around how it's going to work for you then um, we can chat about that and, uh, you know, we can do it today. I also have some time, I think, on Tuesday next week. So, um, you know, let's let's get you like there's no more time to waste. There's no more time to waste. And the, the women who do go through this course later in life, every single one of them in there, if they're, you know, in there, even in their 50s, 60s, 70s, they're like, God, I wish I'd learned this when I was younger. I wish I'd known this my whole life. So <clears throat> it's never too late. The time is now. And, um, you know, we've got some amazing bonuses for, we still have a, some spots left for the first five. So, um, you know, we really want to get, get those for you and get you registered and signed up so we can also start together as this kind of cohort who's starting now, who's ready to do this now. Um, so if anyone doesn't have any other questions, then we will sign off, but I'll pause for a moment. Okay, everyone good? All right. Lovely to see you all today. Your beautiful faces. Thank you, Amanda. She's already off, but thank you so much to her for, for sharing her journey with us and um, just sending you all tons and tons of love. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you tomorrow for our final bonus day. We have one more woman who has been through living sexology who's going to share with you her journey. So I'll see you then. Okay. Namaste.